sorry about the red alarming long title. It just went that way and I have a manuscript, I have too many loose ends in this uh, story I'm going to tell. So, uh, I'm going I'm to draw the attention to Scandinavia and to the, to the Northern tradition uh, rock art that has been rather timelessly uh, associated with prehistoric hunter-gatherer fisher populations and renowned for its many representations of animals. And without ever always returning Cartesian worldview, dominating Western archaeology added to the equation, the imagery has first and foremost been associated with exploitation of resources, where the mission is more or less accomplished when it comes to the meaning of uh, the rock art resulting in rock art locations being interpreted as hunting grounds where the iconography, often in relation with hunting magic, acted as a resource to control the behavior of animals and secure successful hunting. The approaches have mainly focused on the suitability of the different rock art sites for the mentioned hunting practices, or alternatively that the locationing and a broader landscapers present the strategic meeting points for bands or groups, but failing to include the iconography. Uh, and attempting to decode the meaning of the rock art in these perspectives. My title therefore aims to address some alternative uh, inroads to perhaps adjust some of the perspectives associated with the tradition and Western consumptions as usual, that has even labeled the Northern tradition hunter's art. Despite reference to the many compilations of images as narrative, few, few efforts have been made to try to reveal a narrative uh, purpose or structure behind the numerous images. Taking my 15 minutes into account, um, I might suffer from shortcomings on iconographical and narrative details, but I will at least change the setting and the atmosphere, turn away from programmed hunters and uh, turn more over to death and even disasters, DNA and perhaps some decolonizing rele relevance for the Northern tradition. I'll address a somewhat stronger focus on Western Norway, in the, amongst other, the wing inside, and I will, um, um, well, but also the tendencies are more, I see more of the same tendency all over Scandinavia. In uh, retrospect, um, one might also wonder how analysis on, of, of narratives or even past pictorial language that rock art can be characterized as could be nothing but biased, focused only on some of the elements, animals as game, while all the skeletons in motions, defleshed animals and transformations that seemingly take place amongst species in the iconography some, sorry, something happened there. Mm. Ah. Very awkward. Okay. Um, yeah, all the skeletons in motion, defleshed animals and transformations that seemingly take place between species in the iconography are let in the shadow, something I will uh, shortly return to. So, uh, the major challenge for a better understanding of the rock art of Northern tradition has been and still is associated with the chronology of the imagery. While archaeology has taken giant strides in the dating of both archaeological material and past places due to the development of improved scientific approaches, the field of rock art studies has clung always to these relative approaches, such as style comparison and shoreline studies, leaving the rock art as more or less relative. Uh, but in recent years, Several highly targeted excavations in the vicinity of rock art panels have provided archaeological material and also uh, production tools for rock art that uh, has been exclusively delimited to the latter part of the late Mesolithic by, by absolute datings. And also to compensate for the challenge with uh, archaeological sources um, uh, that both predate and, and postdate the rock art excavations have been supported by independent scientific analysis such as palynology, loss on ignition and other such paleo-environmental analysis documenting corresponding impact on the environment. And this has also helped to contribute towards a more general consensus that the northern tradition should be dated to the latter part of the late Mesolithic within the 7th millennium BP and also shown that by 62 Cal BP all northern traditional rock art sites seem to be abandoned in western Norway. This has provided a much more solid basis for comparisons of the different rock art sites. But more importantly, this created a better background for relating the iconography uh, to the remains of contemporary societies that created the rock art. 
The presence of anthropomorphic images has definitely made a difference to balance the utilitarian view on the northern tradition. Ribs, spinal columns, feet, and hands without palms, but long fingers and toes strongly emphasize indicate that these images represent human skeletons. A closer scrutiny into the character of these seem to demonstrate varied or differentiated uh, disarticulation in which the skeletons have been fractioned. A mortuary perspective for the rock art have also provided better premises for representations of um, or for identification of represented skeleton uh, that are uh, disarticulated almost beyond recognition. The differentiated, uh, differentiated disarticulation seems to depend on the nature of the images or type of images in the vicinity of the different depicted skeletons, emphasizing specific meaning behind specific type of disarticulation or manipulation, something which was also reflected in Mesolithic mortuary practices documented elsewhere in Europe. And um, also of relevance that um, there are a number of uh, relations between uh, um, human skeletons and, and red there or cervids in all over uh, Mesolithic Europe. Uh, and in other papers, I was also suggested that animals might have been soul animals, known from an ethnography, uh, complementing regenerating and passing on souls from one uh, individual to the next. Uh, but might have been connected to a number of other levels. Many of the non-human images found at the rock on sites are also depicted with the same skeleton structure or feature as the anthropomorphic or human skeletons, tempting to, to, uh, interpret, to be interpreted as dead or skeletonized animals, adding a death perspective also for the animals, but not necessarily as hunted game. Uh, and for a number of sites, panels, and images, we have the opportunity to classify animals as either being live animals, as this, uh, uh, on the basis of representations of soft tissue or being skeletons. So the, um, the iconography may uh, also express other potential concepts in the borderland between life and death that we are no longer capable of understanding. Similar intention may have been expressed through and the vitality of the numerous depictions of human skeleton images and so on, and be associated with different degrees of that, something that all, that's also known from ethnography. But of relevance uh, for my aim and the northern tradition is the fact that throughout the Mesolithic, the dwelling pattern underwent a gradual change in Scandinavia, culminating in the late Mesolithic when habitation and subsistence seem to be, have, have become more steadily dependent on marine resources, leading to growing sedentism and habitation sites that were concentrated in the vicinity of tidal currents at the outer coast. Many large-scale archaeological projects have documented that the seemingly steady population from the beginning of the late Mesolithic seemed to come to a, to a definitive end before 6002 Cal BP, prior to the, uh, to the transition to the Neolithic. It is therefore striking that not only the production of rock art comes to an end before 6002 Cal BP, but that the latter part of the late Mesolithic seemed to have been marked by a gradual absence of dwelling sites and a drop in the population and uh, just showing uh, some of the processing of large quantities of radiocarbon datings in, from Western Norway, suggesting a gradual decline in the population from around 7 to 6 to Cal BP. And uh, there are also similar um, uh, declines in activity elsewhere in Norway, which is interesting to evaluate in relation to this. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to consider that the emergence of rock art coincided with a high level of sedentism prior to its collapse. So, the presence of socially or physically dead and disarticulated anthropomorphs, skeletonized animal images, the end of a rock art tradition, and the documented severe decline in the population after their clustering into larger groups makes it tempting to suggest that the practice of creating rock art came about as a response or in direct relation to dramatic demographic, demographic changes such as warfare, famine, or other such catastrophic events at the end of the late Mesolithic. Theoretically, rock art may have been introduced as a new cultural phenomenon by other emerging groups, but apart from the rock art itself, there are no obvious changes of material culture supporting such events during the late Mesolithic. Neither is there much evidence to argue in favor or against warfare. It's therefore tempting to suggest that some type of, some type of epidemic could be the cause. Having a large number of people clustered together is known to increase social stress and conflicts, followed by increased ritual activity, and may have led to the production of rock art. A more sedentary structure with a higher density of population may also have made them more vulnerable for infectious diseases, something that could have caused a decline in the population. 
preconditions for the spread of diseases might have been caused by the clustering of people, but also due to other factors such as domestication or semi-domestication of animal species. Then supplements with open middens containing waste, feces and other such material could have caused additional unfavorable conditions. So, recent uh, decades of investigations into past genetics in Europe have helped to shed light on our understanding of past movement, migrations of past groups, and the interaction between them, including insight into past diseases. The challenges for Western Norway are enormous due to the scarcity of human bones from this period, and even the greater scarcity of valid ADNA. As a result, while we're waiting for, for better um, uh, sediment DNA, uh, our knowledge uh, has to be derived from whatever else is uh, accessible, placing a greater emphasis on the value of the rock art and its numerous skeletons and what this may have implied. Despite the shortcomings for human skeletal remains in Scandinavia, successful sequencing of genomes from a limited number of excavated human bones covering most of the Mesolithic has effic efficiently pointed towards uh, a severe, uh, now I pointed towards several uh, migration routes to northern Scandinavia. Uh, and a much greater diversity in Mesolithic, uh, amongst the Mesolithic population in the north compared to South and Central Europe, and revealed that many genetic variants common in the Mesolithic have been lost today. Hardly any DNA from the Mesolithic of the Northern Europe can be found in contemporary European population, populations indicating that mo many groups did not survive to the point where their DNA endured, and which is another indicator in our quest to explain the end of the rock art production of the Northern tradition. In recent history, there are a number of instances in which both animals and humans have been uh, harmed by the same diseases, something we are pretty well accustomed to after a couple of years with COVID that may have caused zoonosis uh, to occur far back in the late Mesolithic, but pretty much ignored in the communities of Mesolithic research. We have added evidence of the domestication of dogs and their presence in Western Norway. Similar relationships may have taken shape with other animals, such as birds, cervids, and even sea mammals on the one hand, and humans on the other, leading to unfortunate and unforeseen uh, conditions. Potential uh, plagues or famines may therefore have infected both humans and the frequently occurring cervids represented in the Northern tradition rock art. This type of scenario could explain why a number of the animal, animal images uh, seem to have bodies uh, with a similar uh, skeletal structure as the human figure. It's even, it's even possible that this articulation was used in an attempt to prevent diseases from reappearing within a past understanding of, within a past understanding of resurrection and regeneration. One of the major challenges in rock art research is the question of why the images first were made and what triggered these types of expressions. It's therefore tempting to suggest that a dramatic condition in which large number of people died, even affecting animals, may have triggered a shift in the religious rituals and led to the making of images into solid rock. That the rock art production was not so much associated with the emergence of sedentism, but much more with its decline. Perhaps the mythology was questioned leading to more explicit expressions in terms of needed transformations of species between animals and also between non-humans and humans, and relations between species that never occur in nature now or then was needed to compensate for, for, for other social challenges. The devil is in the detail, and even presence of elk and red deer not common in nature, together with skeleton representations, might have been other expressions of a past anormal situation that was dealt with through the rock art. An epidemic situation of this kind could also explain the deformed and skeletonized animals associated with deceased and disarticulated ant anthropomorphs. Several ethnographic studies have documented other cultural expressions where social stress has triggered has been triggered by dramatic incidents, such as Australian Aboriginal contact art. Rock art narratives in rock panels argue to be a membrane between the living world, where famine, diseases, or other such incidents were expressed, and the underworld may have been used in an attempt to compensate for crisis in the past and as a result of past dealing with cosmological forces. Cultural change throughout the late Mesolithic period has regularly been discussed in terms of settlement patterns, subsistence, tool technology, and typology. However, the issue of diseases as an agent behind these changes offers perspectives that have received little attention. On the contrary, hunter-gatherer uh, and general population as far back as the Mesolithic tend to be presented as they were thoroughly invincible. 
Although history has revealed numerous examples of crisis, atrocities, epidemics, and the different ways in which humans responded to compensate for them, there are perspectives that are rarely reflected in analysis of how death was perceived and dealt with in the late Mesolithic, and understood as far less of a crisis for past societies than, tho than those that exist today. The iconography of the rock art site suggests that this may not have been the case. Besides, mortuary practices have barely been touched upon in the Mesolithic of Norway, as there are very few burials in our area, causing that as a topic to barely exist in descriptions of these societies, resulting in the extreme cultures where people experience no loss and hardly any religious perception, becoming nothing short of caricatures of societies. Equally relevant are ethnographic approaches to traditional societies comparable with the Mesolithic societies that have shown that despite clearly detectable differences in their internal organization, these cosmologies draw no clear ontological distinctions between humans, numerous types of animals, and even plant species. These approaches and analysis have provided an insight into alternative worldviews with both humans and non-humans not related in nature are likely to infer with each other in just as complicated manners, dependent on past cosmological structures, mythology, or other such, such belief systems, adding also to decolonizing of past humans and non-humans. Therefore, a more thorough decoding and deciphering of the numerous panels with Northern traditional rock art, analyzed in, right of, in the light of the relevant archaeological and scientific data, may potentially extract more meaning from the pictorial language, helping us to acquire a neighbor and an even deeper understanding of its syntax and late Mesolithic demography, epidemics, diseases, and past images of the dead. Thank you. Thank you so much.